Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. My name is Jason, thanks for checking out the channel. Today we're looking at the brand new Bluetti EB3A. Now this is currently the smallest power station that they offer, coming in at 268 watt hours of capacity. It does have lithium iron phosphate chemistry inside, so you get the 2000 life cycles down to 80%. So after using it 2000 times, you can still have 80% of the original capacity. Now this comes in priced at $299 on Bluetti's website, but for a limited time, you can pick it up for $249, which is a decent price. And I have an additional $10 discount code I'll include in the video description, so you can bring the price down to $239. Now when comparing this to the previous generation, the EB55 and the EB70, I'll show you it's a little bit smaller because it has much less capacity, but there are some really good upgrades with this power station. For example, they upgraded the display so you have much more information. There are no longer external charging bricks that are loud. You just plug it right into the wall and it charges right up. And this power station has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity so you can control it with the smart app. This allows you to update the firmware, turn on and off the outputs, and you can change the charging speed all with the Bluetooth app, which is really cool. Now in this video, we're gonna be doing extensive testing on this to figure out the actual capacity versus the advertised capacity. We're gonna see if it has regulated output, supports pass-through charging, and at the end of the video, we're gonna put it through my new power station grading system, and we're gonna give it a score of one to 10 so we can see how it performs against the competition. Now, hopefully you guys are excited. Let's go ahead and jump right into the review. Now let's go ahead and break down the design and outputs really quick. Now this comes in at 10.1 pounds, it's very lightweight, and everything is on the front or the top, there's nothing on the sides or back. Now starting with the display, you can see everything, watts input, watts output, an actual percentage, and an estimated time remaining. For your DC output, you have a 12 volt cigarette plug with a dust cover, which is always nice, and two 5521s. And the output, you can just toggle by pushing it, and it has a really large green light, so you can easily see when it's on. For USB ports, you have two USB-A ports that are rated at 3 amps. They're not quick charge ports. And you have a USB-C power delivery 100 watt output. It is not bi-directional, so you cannot charge the power station, which is kind of a bummer. I was really hoping for that on this. You have an LED light up here, which has low mode, high mode, and SOS. And then you have your inverter down here with two outlets. This is a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter and it does put out 120 volts, which is really nice. Usually you don't see a full 120 volts on small power stations. Down here you have your charging input, which is an eight millimeter and you have your AC charging here where you plug in your cable, no external charging brick, which is awesome. You do have wireless charging on the top and a folding handle and the sides are just bare. The back is bare. So everything is on the front. And uh, I really like the design. Let's go ahead and jump into the actual testing. Now I like to do a variety of tests on the DC output of power stations. And the first one is seeing if it has a regulated output. So plugging in my battery load tester, I was able to verify that this has a regulated output of 13.3 volts through the entire state of charge. So that's really good on this power station. Now the next test I like to do is to see how much power you can pull from the DC output before it shuts off from being overloaded. Bluetti states this is rated at 10 amps total. So 10 amps is a total combination between all three of these. Now I plugged in my battery load tester and I was able to pull a total of 132 watts from the 12 volt socket and from these 5521 barrel connections, but you cannot pull more than 10 amps. Anytime you pull 10 amps, this will shut off and it will give you the overloaded error message. Now another test that's really important to know is how much power does this lose over time or a parasitic drain test if you have the DC output enabled with no load on it. Now, if you have this on, it'll lose around 1% per hour, which is pretty normal for a power station this size. Now, of course, I wanted to see if this had any auto shutoff settings, so I took my SetPower FC12 portable fridge and plugged it into the DC output, and I had this charged up to 100% and let it go all the way down to 0%, and this ran for a total of 26 and a half hours on that 12 volt compressor fridge at 70 degrees. So no auto shutoff settings on this power station, which is really nice. Now the last test that I like to do on these power stations is a full discharge test to compare the advertised capacity versus the actual capacity. So I plugged in my battery load testers and discharged the battery all the way down. And I was able to pull 228 watt hours from this power station. Now doing the math, that comes out to be around 85% of the advertised capacity. 
So that's pretty good. That's the minimum goal that I'd like to see on these power stations. And with all the larger components inside, that's pretty good on this small power station. Now, the last aspect of testing the DC output is by testing the USB ports and wireless charging on the power station. So I plugged in a USB LED light, a USB fan, and I also tried charging another power station using the 100 watt output, and all those seemed to work really well. So no issues charging multiple devices at the same time using this power station. Now let's go ahead and talk about testing the AC inverter on this power station. Now it is rated at 600 watts, and remember the battery capacity is 268 watt hours, so there are some downsides to having such a large inverter on a small battery. Now the first thing is if you're running at 600 watts, you're going to see around 30 minutes of runtime before the battery runs out completely, so keep that in mind. Also, the parasitic drain is a little bit higher on this power station versus others that I've tested. For example, to test the parasitic drain, I left the AC output on for three hours, and when I came back, it was sitting around 84%, which means it's around 5% per hour that you'll lose on the battery just by leaving the AC inverter on with no load. So keep that in mind, it's a little bit higher than normal. Now, in order to test the AC output on this power station, I did hook up my oscilloscope, and I did get a pure sine wave output sitting at 120 volts and 60 hertz. Now that's really nice because a lot of smaller power stations only put out 110 volts, so it's nice to get the same power that you get from your power company. Pure sine wave output, 120 volts, 60 hertz. Now the next test that I did is I did a 15 minute full load test to see what would happen at 600 watts. So as that test was running, the fans did kick on. They were pulling around 52 decibels, which isn't very loud. And I didn't see any issues with the voltage dropping. It was able to hold 120 volts just fine. And it did have a pure sine wave output during that entire test. So very impressive results during that full 600 watt load test. Now the next set of tests that I did on the AC inverter was a complete discharge test, meaning that I took it from 100% all the way down until it shut off to see how much power we could pull from the capacity of the power station. Now I tracked all the output through a kilowatt meter and at the end of the test, I got around 210 watt hours of capacity. Now if you compare that 210 watt hours to the advertised 268 watt hours, that's around 78.3% of the advertised capacity, meaning we didn't score that amazing on this test. And it probably has to do with the amount of background power that the AC inverter uses. Now this power station also has a UPS mode, which is something you usually don't see on such small power stations. And what that means is that you can have this plugged in the wall and if it's showing UPS mode on the screen and if the power goes out, Basically, it transfers the load from the wall straight over to the batteries inside. Now, I tested this out by plugging in my studio lights. I had this plugged in on UPS mode, and then I unplugged it from the wall. You could see my lights flash very quickly, and then they came back on, and uh, everything was powering off the battery. So pretty cool to have a UPS backup in a small power station like this. Now, one thing I did note is that I plugged in my oscilloscope to test the noise and the output of the inverter when it is in UPS mode. And I did notice that the pure sine wave output had a little bit more noise on it than when it wasn't charging or in UPS mode. So just keep that in mind that you may have some electronics that have a little bit of noise whenever it's in UPS mode. Let's go ahead and talk about charging up the EB3A. Now out of the box, it only comes with one cable and this is an AC charging cable that plugs directly into this charging port on the front. Luckily, this does not have an external charging brick. All the charging is built inside the unit, but if you're looking to charge off of DC power from a vehicle or another battery or off solar panels, you will have to go out and purchase additional cabling so that you can charge this power station. Okay, so I plugged it into the wall and on the app, there are three different charging speeds. You have a silent charging speed, standard charging speed and turbo. So I have it currently set to silent. You can see that there are no fans running at all and it's charging right around 100 watts. This would probably take around three hours or so to charge the power station, but the benefit is there is no noise when you're using this charging mode. Now the second fastest charging speed is standard mode and it charges right around 260 watts, which will basically fill this power station up in about an hour from 0% up to 100%, which is really fast. I really like using this standard charging speed. Now the fastest way to charge up this power station is by kicking it over to turbo mode. Now when you do this charging mode, it'll charge from 350 watts all the way up to 430 watts, depending on the battery percentage. Now there is a warning when you go to enable this, this will shorten the lifespan of the battery because you are putting extra stress on it. So only use this if you absolutely have to. 
Now we just wanted to demonstrate how fast it would charge if you're using a DC power source like a vehicle or a separate battery. And I'm using my charging cable from my EB70 because it has a eight millimeter charging port and it's charging at 93 watts, which will basically charge this in about three hours, which isn't too bad at all. So here's a closer look at the charging cable, 12 volt socket on one end, eight millimeter on the other. And this, like I said, came with my Blue Eddy EB70. I'm guessing you can purchase this same cable on their website if you wanted to use it with the EB3A. Now, next, I wanna take this outside and do a solar charging demo. Now, if you wanted to use solar panels on this power station, you'd wanna go out and purchase this adapter that has eight millimeter on one end and MC4 connections on the other. And that would plug right into the charging input. So let's go ahead and take this outside and plug it into some solar panels to see the max power that we can get. Okay, so let's do some solar testing on the EB3A. Now I'm gonna use two of these 180 watt Bouge RV solar panels connected together in parallel to over panel the power station. Now the solar conditions today are really good. It's about 80 degrees and we have just a little bit of haze, but no clouds. So as you can see, I have these two panels connected in parallel, plugging straight into the EB3A. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wattage. Okay, so looking at the screen, you see we're getting 160 watts input. Let me go ahead and plug in the EB70 to see if we get the same amount of power on that or slightly more on this one because of the higher amp input limit. Okay, so I just plugged in the solar panels to the EB70 and it looks like we're still getting 160 watts. So unfortunately, the EB3A performs just like the EB55 and EB70. I was hoping for a little bit more power input, but it looks like we'll just get the same as the older model generations. Now the maximum power input that I've seen on the EB70 was just a couple days ago when I was comparing it to the EcoFlow River Pro. The EB70 was getting around 167 watts maximum input, and that was because these panels were clean and the sun was lined up perfectly with them. So when you don't have ideal uh, conditions, you're gonna see around 155 to 160 watts input charging on the EB3A, EB55, and EB70. Now, I just wanted to demonstrate that pass-through charging does work on this power station. For example, I have the AC inverter enabled with this small heater. The USB outputs are on, powering this 12-volt fan. I have a phone charging on the top using wireless charging, and I'm charging some lithium-ion batteries using the 12-volt socket. And even while I'm running all that load, you can see I'm charging at 90 watts off my separate battery. So this, in fact, does support pass-through charging. Now, one last thing that I want to talk about with this power station is that this has a smart app or Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity. Now, if you download the Blue Eddy app on your smartphone, either Android or Apple, you can connect to this remotely. And there's a lot of things that you can do. You can turn on and off the outputs. You can see the percentage. You can see which charge amount is coming in from either the grid or solar, which is really nice. Now, you can also adjust the charging speeds and you can turn on and off eco mode. And the best thing is this is a firmware update feature. So if there's anything that Blue Eddy wants to improve in the future, they can push a new firmware update to this and fix it. So very cool that this has Bluetooth connectivity with the smart app and definitely moving in the right direction as I think every power station should have this capability. Okay, so there are a few quirks with this power station that I thought I'd share with you. Let's go ahead and jump into the first one. The first one is the fan noise whenever they're starting to turn on. Let me go ahead and show you what it sounds like. Now it kind of sounds like the fans aren't spinning yet, but they're trying to. So I don't know if it's just because the fans are so variable in speed. For example, if there's no load on it, the fans hardly run. But then once you get up a little bit higher, you can hear the fans turn on and they run really low. And then when you get a max load, you can hear them spool up to full speed and they're variable. So I'm wondering if maybe they just need to kick up the RPM just a little bit on startup so you don't get that noise. Now the next thing I notice is that whenever you're charging this off the AC wall, uh, charging input there's a relay inside that clicks on and off and every now and then it clicks off so you'll be charging at 260 watts and then it goes to zero watts and then it'll turn back on and start charging again now it doesn't happen all the time but it's kind of frustrating where it will stop charging and start charging and then stop charging and start charging so not sure what's up with that the benefit is this does have the blue eddy uh, smart app, which you can update the firmware on this. So I think both those issues could be solved with the firmware update. So I hope Blue Eddy hears this feedback so they can make those changes to make this a better power station. 
Okay, so now that we've fully tested the power station, we've talked about all the features and we've talked about some of the quirks, let's go ahead and put this through my power station grading system, giving it a score of one to 10 so we can compare it against the competition. Now this scoring system helps us to understand the price per performance, all the features that it has, and if there's any major issues. So let's go ahead and dive into the first grading point. Number one, can this power station charge up to 100% in less than four hours? With the quick charging capability, this can charge up in less than an hour, which is pretty awesome. Number two, does this power station support pass-through charging? Yes, you can charge it and discharge it at the same time with no issues. Number three, does this have a pure sine wave inverter? Yes, it has a pure sine wave inverter with 120 volt output at 60 hertz. Number four, does this have a regulated output? This power station has a regulated output of 13.3 volts, which is great for running all your DC appliances. Number five, does this have an informational display? Yes, out of all the EB series, this is the first one to actually have a informational display, which is super helpful. Number six, does this have any auto shutoff settings on the DC output? After all my testing, I did not see any auto shutoff settings on the DC output, so it should be able to run a 12 volt compressor fridge or any other DC load without any issues. Number seven, how does this score on my USB grading scale? It does have a USB-C output. It supports 100 watts output, but not 100 watts input. So I give it a score of 0.66 points out of one point available. Number eight, does this meet at least 85% of its rated capacity? Yes, it barely squeaks by on the DC capacity test hitting 85%. The AC test did not score that well, but at least we hit it on the 85%, so it does get a point there. Number nine, can this charge in less than five hours using solar panels input? But this will charge at 160 watts via solar panels, allowing it to charge in a little over an hour and a half, which is way awesome that you can charge it that quick. In the final grading category, number 10, is this priced at 80 cents a watt hour or less? Now this comes in at a sale price of $249 and a capacity of 268 watt hours which means it comes in at around 92 cents per watt hour. So unfortunately I can't give it a point there because it's not under 80 cents. So tallying up all the points at the end, this power station came in with a very respectable score of 8.66 points out of 10 points available. So I've yet to get a perfect power station. This one would be really close if it was, per, if it was priced under 80 cents a watt hour because the only thing it lacks is a bi-directional 100 watt USB-C port. Well, we're coming to the end of the video and I just want to take a few minutes to sum up my thoughts on the EB3A. Now thinking about the older generation, the EB55 and EB70, this is a good step in the right direction. You have a lot of features on here that are new that the other models didn't have. For example, the updated display, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity app, the built-in charger, UPS mode, and the fact that this charges so quick off solar panels. For example, a 300 watt hour power station, you know, competition this usually charges around 60 to 100 watts solar panels. And this one charges at 160, which is super awesome. Now it really looks like Blue Eddy's listening to their customers because they've made all these changes. And I really hope to see them update both of these behind me, like an EB5A or an EB7A, or maybe even an EB10A, a thousand watt or thousand watt hour model. I'd love to see that. Now there are just a few little quirks with this. Like I mentioned before, the fan noise and the relay clicking on and off, I think those can be fixed. But the other bummer is that it doesn't come with the DC charging cable or solar charging cable. I really like to see that. I mean, raising the price $10 including those cables, I think is almost mandatory. So maybe they'll do that on a future option, but not including all the charging cables, kind of a bummer. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about this uh, power station. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is it something you guys would go out and buy or are you gonna look for something else? Also, what other features would you like to see on a new lineup from Bluetti? I love that this has lithium iron phosphate batteries inside, so you get all the life cycles. Pretty awesome competition that Bluetti is offering here. Anyway, guys, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and if you guys aren't subscribed, I'd love you guys to subscribe to the channel to keep it growing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video.